What's up, everybody? I am back with our contest contest winner, Matt King. What's up, Matt? How we doing? Hey, what's going on, man? You're doing good. <laughs> so we want to do a another follow up video. So today is Wednesday, October eighteenth. So we've essentially been uh, doing this uh, kind of coaching trading uh, of our fifty thousand dollar account for the last uh, eighteen days, a little over two weeks. And we've got some positions on, so I just wanted to kind of update everybody, share everybody, share with everybody where we're at. Uh, we're currently on the monitor tab in the Thinkorswim platform, and you can see we've got four different positions on. So we've got a position on in gold futures, we've and we're uh, we're up about 190 bucks, 200 bucks on that one uh, currently. Our second position is we've got a natural gas futures trade on. And we're up about 50 bucks on that one. We've got the NASDAQ forward slash NQ and down about 80 bucks on that one. And then the fourth position is the 30 year bond forward slash ZB. And we're up a little over 200 bucks on that one. So total up around 400 bucks. So not too bad. We're, we're in the green. We're in the positive so far. So, so far, so good, right? Hey, that's extra money we didn't have to work for, right? So. <laughs> that's right. Well, this is actually hard work, Matt. This is hard work. <laughs> uh, okay, so so what I wanted to do today, so go ahead and go ahead and drop down in the upper left hand corner of your screen where it says account info. Go ahead and drop that down, so we can get an idea of the buying power that we have in the uh, in the very upper are you looking at? very upper left hand corner where it says account info. Go ahead and drop that down, so you can see our total account value fifty thousand four eighteen. And available funds for trading thirty nine over thirty nine thousand. So we're using a little over ten thousand dollars in capital right now, and so that's you know about twenty percent of the total. So we're just you know implied volatility is pretty low across the board right now. Uh, so we we don't want to jump all in and put on a ton of positions because if implied volatility does spike, we want to have some dry powder. We want to have some cash available to to take advantage of those opportunities. But I think it's a good time to put on at least one more position. And as we talked about in, in the previous sessions, you know, we're, we're really focusing on, for this contest, we're focusing on trading options on futures uh, for a couple of reasons. One, Matt is not that familiar with trading options on futures, so it's a good coaching learning session for him, and he gets to do it with our money, which is kind of the best of both worlds. And then... And then secondly, you know, we, we're getting ready to come out with a futures uh, a course, trading options on futures. And so I think this will help kind of get people to help grasp the concept of, of using those. And, and in this case, with a $50,000 account, you know, I don't, I don't have any reservations using naked options. So all the positions that we've put on so far are strangles, which are undefined positions. You know, we're, we're obviously staying pretty small. So far, we're only using 20% of our capital available. And so we just, we want to continue to add positions on. And in this case, the, the, the position we're going to add to is the NASDAQ. So instead of adding another symbol, we're going to keep this very streamlined, very simple, and, and really just trade a handful of symbols. But go ahead and go to the Analyze tab, Matt, on your NASDAQ there. So you actually already clicked on it over there on your... I'm actually on it. You're already good to go, so just click on your Analyze tab. And what you'll see is this is our, this is our visual graph. So as you can see, price is kind of in the upper, upper part of our range, right? So it's, it, it, it hasn't breached our, our upper short strike. So technically it's not in a position where we would make our mechanical adjustment you know in our in our how i maximize profits trading options course which is all about trading short strangles remember the mechanical way to make an adjustment is to wait until price breaches that upside that upside short strike and then we would roll up the untested side and and manage it that way the second step that i that i like to do if implied volatility warrants is I like to add another strangle. So we're gonna do this a little bit backwards and I wanna show you just, you know, as you scale into positions, as your account grows and, and, and you wanna manage your trades. Uh, in this case, we're not, we're not necessarily waiting for price to breach. We're simply just 
adding another strangle here. And the reason we're doing that is, is twofold. One, for this case, for, the, for this situation, we've got, we've got money that we want to get working for us. So that's one. Number two, implied volatility has gone up a little bit since we initially put this position on. And so to, to illustrate that, Matt, click on your charts tab and let's just see where implied volatility is in the NASDAQ currently. So if we take a look at, uh, and remember on, on this one, we have, to, we have to use the corresponding ETF. So go over to your watch list there and click on the QQQ. So scroll up a little bit. Yep, click on QQQ. So this is the PowerShares QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF. So you can see implied volatility. The IV percentile is at 58. So it's in a nice position where if we didn't have any position on, you know, this would be a good symbol to put, put a new premium selling position on because implied volatility is over that 50 level, which is kind of that line in the sand that we like to see implied volatility to put new trades on. Does that all make sense so far? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm following for right now. Cool. So go back to go back to your current account watch list there down in the bottom left and and click on the the NQZ7 the the uh, position that we currently have on and then let's go to the trade tab and let's go ahead and like I said let's just put on another strangle and essentially what we're doing when we do this is we are going to be widening our break evens and we are going to be collecting more credit. Uh, so this is going to enhance the amount of potential profit we can get. And with implied volatility still nice at a decent level, we should be able to collect some decent premium uh, for putting this trade on. So Matt, I'm going to put you on the spot here and, and ask you a couple questions. So looking at the option chain here, we've got, mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got our position on in the cycle with 30 days to expiration. What is, what's kind of the time frame that we want to be entering new trades, putting them on, how many days to expiration? Uh, ideally, we're looking for 45 days. Yep, 45 days and, and really anywhere between 30 and 60 is okay. Yep. So we are, we're, at a, we're at a point now in time, just happens to be on the, on the day that we're trading this, we've got, we've got really two choices and there's no wrong answer, but we could either choose the November options and remember in, in the NASDAQ to stay in the ones that have the most liquid, we want to do the ones that, that are highlighted in white, either the week three or the regular monthly to, to make sure that there's decent liquidity. And so we can either choose the one that the same cycle that we're currently in with 30 days to expiration, or we can choose the one with 58. So we're, we're kind of in a, a situation where we could choose either one. Uh, and, and it really doesn't matter. The the, the, the things that you want to weigh when you're trying to make this decision of which one to choose is, okay, I know that if I choose the one with 30 days to expiration, I'm going to collect a smaller credit. Okay, in other words, my potential profit on the trade is going to be lower than if I chose the 58. But the benefit is that profit could come quicker because we have less time to expiration, those prof those those options are going to decay faster. So what I would say, and, and, and so if, if you choose the, the one with 58 days, you're gonna collect more credit, your range is gonna be wider, but those options are gonna take longer to profit. It's gonna, they're gonna take longer to decay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes good sense. Okay, so unless you have a preference, Matt, and I'll, I'll, I'll go with what you want, but um, you know, with, with because we we still have thirty days to expiration in that one, uh, I would I would probably lean towards doing the thirty days to expiration just to keep it in the same cycle. And and as we add new positions, we can always we can always roll out to the December cycle because we've you know we've got fifty eight days, so that's going to be available for the next thirty days for us to trade in as well. That's kind of what I was thinking was that one seems like it's in a, you know, for time purposes, that one seems like it's in a good spot um, for us to jump into and things can happen a little bit. I know things will happen probably a little bit faster in there, but, um, but you know, whatever, it's 
I think that's where we should be. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. So open up that 30 days to expiration cycle. And then go ahead and scroll down to the at the money options so we can get an idea of kind of which strike the different deltas are trading at. It's a lot of strikes. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll set this up just like we normally do. So you're going to choose, go down to kind of the anywhere from the 17 to 20 delta range on the call side. Right, from the 17 to 20. Uh... And I mean, you're kind of you're kind of splitting hairs between which ones you choose. So, you know, just pick one of those anywhere you know, 17, 19, 20, anywhere in there. Would be uh, would be yeah. fine. Yeah, it's definitely splitting hairs. We go with nineteen. Sounds like a good medium. Sounds good. So just go ahead and right click on that cell strangle. So strangle and and so we've I my data went there, but yeah. So we <laughs> so we we've got our we've got our call strike selected, and then it just defaults to the sixty two seventy on the put. Uh, as soon as the the, the platform kind of updates, we'll then we'll need to go in and choose the, the strike that we want to utilize on the put side. Mm -hmm. So and okay, it looks like there's uh, I think that's the information that's coming back there. Yep. So go ahead and keep keep scrolling down till we find you know, one look at about the 19 delta on the uh, on the put side as well. So keep scrolling there. There we go. 19 there looks like that one's good. That one's got a strike of 5900. Yeah. So we'll change the put to 5900. There we go. Then right click anywhere on that red and analyze this puppy. You good with uh, one one contract? Yeah, let's keep it at one. Okay. Last trade. And I'd like to yeah, I'd like to keep it at one just because that's going to allow us to continue to scale scale in and out of positions. And since we're only going to be utilizing a handful of symbols, um, then we want to, you know, we, we want to have that ability to keep our position size small and be able to scale scale in and out. Okay. So go ahead and go ahead and click and drag that graph up a little bit so we can see our positions down below. And it's kind of a it's kind of a toss is kind of finicky. You gotta you gotta grab. There, yeah, you, go. there you go. So, so right now, so we've got our current position and then we've also got our other position clicked on. So when we have both of them clicked on together, now you can see what happens. You can see that's a combination of the two positions that's depicted in the graph up above. And so um, go ahead and click off of your current position. So uncheck all the boxes except for the red one. Okay. It'll look like that. Yeah, so now this is just our new new position that we're that we're getting getting ready to put on. So uh, as you can see, it's just kind of a normal strangle. You can set your slices, yep, like you're getting ready to do there to break even. There you go. And so you can see you've got about a sixty-four, a little bit, a little over sixty-four percent probability of profit, and that's if we held it all the way to expiration. Obviously, we like to book our winners before it gets to expiration so our our probabilities of making money on this trade are much higher than that and so um so yeah i mean so so this is this looks good i mean we're again we're just kind of scaling into implied volatility adding position collecting more credit widening our break evens on the overall trade and so uh yeah it looks good okay. There we go. It's a little bit easier to see like that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah. So go ahead and go down to the red box there, where and where it says the price of forty six twenty five. We're not going to get filled there. Go ahead and click that down to about let's say forty five seventy five. And remember, on these Nasdaq futures, you have to do it increments of twenty five cents, otherwise you'll get rejected. So. 
4575, so go ahead and right click anywhere on the red and confirm and send. Confirm, send, and plenty of buying power. Click send. And you can, and bef well, yeah, I was just going to show. In the middle of the send, I'm holding on to. Okay, yeah, I was just going to show where it says buying power effect. You can see we're using a little over 3400 bucks uh, in capital to put this trade on. So pretty similar to what we what we did before. Our max profit is nine $915. And we're uh, we're most likely gonna book this profit, assuming it stays in our range, we're gonna book about 40 to 50% of that and then redeploy that capital into another trade. So yeah, go ahead and hit send. Okay. I had my finger pressed on there, ready to go. <laughs> Get your finger on the trigger. Yep. So not getting filled there. So go ahead and click that little arrow at the bottom of the screen there, and let's go ahead and cancel and replace that order. Which one do I put this one down here? Yep. Yeah. Um, cancel, replace. Let's go ahead and move that down to 45.50. Okay. And then confirm and send. And you know, that like we like we saw last time. You know, these, uh, the NASDAQ futures, they're not as liquid. The, the, the bid ask spreads are a little bit wider than others, but there you go. So we got filled at, at 45.50. And I think we talked about this on the last video too, but you know, those, that mid price, that, I mean, that's kind of a theoretical mid price that TOS gives you to give you an idea of where price is trading, but that doesn't mean you're going to get filled there. So you've got to do a little bit of price discovery and, and kind of adjust that like we did. Now we got filled, so we are in the trade. Sounds good to me. Is there anything else that we needed to do with uh, with with this one? There's there's nothing else to do at this point. Um, you know, you can you can just to just to look at the others. Uh, go ahead and and click on uh, or go back to your analyze tab. Yep. There we go. And we can kind of take a look at where our other positions stand. So click on that one, forward slash GC, Z7. This is our gold position. So, so if you click on that, you can see, and you can, you can see price is still very centered. Uh, you know, and we're, we're up a little bit of money on that one. Not enough profit to, to take off yet. You know, like I said, we want to, if we got 30% of max profit, Within uh, ten days, we'll we'll book that. If we got you know um, if we got forty percent of max profit within fifteen days, we would book that. Uh, other, or if it takes longer, we're, we're typically looking for about fifty percent of max profit. And and this is this is all outlined in the course. It's outlined in our ebook. Uh, kind of those optimal times to manage these trades. So not enough profit in this one to take off yet, but we're we're sitting pretty, uh, assuming price kind of stays in a nice range. We'll just kind of give it a little bit more time for these options to decay before we book a profit in gold. Are you looking at uh, ten within ten days or within fifteen days of the time that you put that trade on, or exactly uh, within? Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was on the front side, and not like ten days from the uh, from expiration, or fifteen from the expiration. Correct. Just clarify. That's all. Yeah, just uh, yeah. The sooner you know, if you get if you get profits quickly. It just makes sense to book those profits. There's no reason to wait around and try to get a little bit more. You're better off just booking those profits and redeploying that capital into other high probability trades. Okay. So click on your natural gas symbol. Let's see where that one is. Same kind of story. We got a little bit of a little bit of profit in there, right dead smack in the middle, so nothing to do there. We already looked at. Go ahead. Reading that right, about thirty thirty five dollars profit, which would be, or that's just the price that it's at. Yeah, no, that that's where price is right now. So whatever the profit line is at, so you're up about thirty five bucks on that trade. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was reading that right. Yep. And then that would be not. That's not 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 nearly close enough to get out of. Right. And we already looked at we already looked at Nasdaq, so go ahead and click on the bonds. Okay. Got a nice nice down move in bonds today. It's down 
uh, 65 basis points, over half percent. And so that's actually helping our position. If it moves down a little bit more even, that'll, that'll even get us a little bit more in the profit. Um, so, you can, so you can see where price is. It's still well within our range. And we've got a little bit of profit in there, but not enough to, uh, to take off yet. So if you hover over the little hash mark over to the right there, so you can see we're up about 180, 180 bucks. Yep. And the easy, you know, I just wanted to kind of show this, the, the graphs, because I'm a visual person. I think a lot of people are. Uh, you know, the simple, easiest way just to see where you're at on each position is exactly where we started our, our coaching session here, which is just click on the monitor tab. And that gives you the the breakdown of how much you're how much you're up on each position, and then kind of your total portfolio. So there you go. Yeah. Now, just by looking at this, you can't really tell what percentage of or can you or like what percentage you're at of, of profit. Like I would have to go into that to see. Okay, I'm at I'm at $190 uh, here, but um, but I don't know what percentage. Uh, total profit that is. Yeah, exactly. So that's when that's where I typically just go into the analyze tab and kind of click through the different positions to see where I'm at relative to max profit. Yep. Okay. That's good to me. Um, yeah, I like it, and then just kind of taking a look every day and kind of poking around to see see what it is. Make try and you know make decision as to what I would do, whether I would move forward with something. You know, even if I'm not going to do anything. Um, you know, it's good to get in here and try and make that decision and then see if it matches up with what you would do. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, just a, that's just a big part of, of trading is just staying engaged, kind of watching the different symbols. And then you kind of get a good feel for, for what, you know, how much they move each day and kind of what you can expect uh, as, a, as a range. And all this is priced into the, the options and it's all kind of built into the platform, but it helps keep you engaged. And the more, it's just like anything, right? Any, the more you... The more you do it, the more you practice, the more you see it, the the more second nature it's going to become. And you know, before before long, I mean, you're just going to be able to quickly glance at it, check through in five minutes, boom, uh, add a trade if you need to, take one off if you need to, and, and be done. And and so you know, we, we talk about it all the time uh, in, in in teaching our methodology and che- teaching our strategies. You don't have to be glued to your computer screen all day. You know, this isn't day trading. We are, we're, I mean, you can literally trade less than 15 minutes a day and be, be extremely successful with the type of uh, strategies that we teach. Yeah, just wake up a few minutes early and, uh, you know, jump in, take care of what you need to do. And actually, I guess you really couldn't do that because you have to kind of wait until you're inside of the um, trading hours, I guess. But <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's between 8.30, depending on what time you wake up, Matt, maybe you're late, yeah. maybe you're a late bloomer. I don't know. <laughs> you like, you know, it's, I guess you're on the East coast, so it's, uh, nine 30 your time. So yeah, if you're waking up at nine 30 and that's early to you, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Well, I, was, I, don't know, I was thinking, oh yeah, just wake up at like seven 30, but I know that it's not going to be seven 30 everywhere where the, uh, where the, where the, the, the days are open or where it's going to open up. So yeah. Now, keep in mind, you know, one of the, one of the advantages to trading futures is that they actually trade about 24 five so 24 hours a day there and they they close for you know a little bit of a period here and a period there because they have to reconcile on the exchange and stuff like that and then they're obviously closed on the weekend and they open back up around five o'clock on Sunday evening but if there was some crazy situation going on where we needed to get out of a position or for some reason we really wanted to get into something and it was not in normal, market trading hours, which is 8.30 to 3 central time, then uh, that, that is one advantage of futures is you can you can trade those uh, in off hours. Whereas if you're just in listed stocks and ETFs, uh, you actually cannot trade those until the actual open market hours between 8.30 and 3 p.m. central time. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So I... I that one in the journal. Yeah, I mean, I, I never do. I, I, I never... I, Oh, I shouldn't say never. I almost never trade outside of normal market hours just because a lot of times you'll see the, the bid ask spreads widen and there's not quite the liquidity there because the, the, the trading is not really going on. So I, I, you want to make it a practice, a best practice to only trade during normal market hours. But, uh, but that, is, that is one thing that 
uh, is different from futures to the listed option places that uh, technically, if, if needed, you, you can trade outside of those normal market hours. Gotcha. Well, cool. Well, let's wrap it up for the day. Say bye to everybody, and we will connect here shortly. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate everything, and I will catch up with you on uh, our, next, uh, our next session. Sounds good. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.